Welcome to Courageous Parenting Podcast, a weekly show to equip parents with biblical truth on raising confident Christian kids in an uncertain world. Hi, I'm Angie from Courageous Mom. And I'm Isaac from Resolute Man. We've been married 19 years and have seen the fruit in raising our eight kids biblically based on the raw truth found in the Bible. We can no longer let the culture win the hearts of children. Too many children from Christian families are walking away from the faith by age 18, and it doesn't have to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. Join us as we start an important conversation about effective parenting in a fallen world. Welcome back to the podcast. Hi, guys. Merry Christmas. Yes. Christmas week episode. We are so excited to be on this journey with you guys, and we thought that it would be a fun um, podcast to read from Scripture, the actual story of the birth of Jesus this week. And this is good for the whole family, so you can listen to it. If you love it and you think it would be beneficial for your kids, you can listen to it while the kids are playing or listening Mm in, um, because this speaks to the heart of Christmas and gets our eyes focused Mm -hmm. on what's most important. Yeah, and you guys, in the past few um, podcasts, well, actually, a few episodes ago when we talked about uh, Should Christians Celebrate Christmas, that title doesn't fully represent everything that's in that podcast, because we also talk about keeping Jesus the center of Christmas, which might be encouragement to you if you haven't listened to that podcast yet. I think it's episode 48. Um, And I would just encourage you guys that in this podcast to grab your kids, maybe listen with them. Um, And Isaac is going to share some of the message that he actually shared with our our church body. And it was just so edifying and encouraging to read through this passage of scripture that he normally reads to our family. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought that we would share it with you guys, our online family, because this is the time of year that we get to talk about different things like Christmas traditions. And this is one of our Christmas traditions is to read the, the account of Jesus's birth. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And just right before we get in, just some cool news. This is pretty cool on iTunes. Mm-hmm. We just eclipsed the podcast, just eclipsed a thousand ratings. And what? that's pretty incredible. That's really cool. The podcast yeah. started this year. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're a part of that. Thank uh, you and we guys. appreciate it. And the reviews, over 200 written reviews, too. Mm-hmm. So just incredible. It all takes a tap to do that, and it means the world. Okay, so we're going to dive into, if you have your Bibles, great. If not, no worries. Uh, but we're going to read in Luke. I love the Gospel of Luke uh, and talking mm-hmm. about the birth of Jesus mm-hmm. and how it kind of portrays things. It's, uh, it's great. And uh, I just first want to say that Christmas isn't about a beginning. A lot of times we think that it's about a beginning, but Christ always was. Christ was with God in the beginning. That's actually, I love that you're starting out talking about that. That's the beginning of John, which is another gospel. Yeah. So in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word Mm -hmm. and the word was with God. So now we know what was in the beginning so far, the word and God. Let's Mm -hmm. read a little further. And the word was God. Oh, so the word was God. So Mm -hmm. this was already existed before he inspired people to write it. Right. Pretty awesome. And here's the clincher. He was in the beginning with God. That's Jesus. That's right. Jesus. That's Jesus. And all things things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. See, the significance of the birth of Jesus only is there if we understand what happened on the cross. So if your kids don't understand mm-hmm. the cross and what Jesus did for us, mm-hmm. how are they going to really understand the powerful meaning of Christmas mm-hmm. with Jesus' birth? And to even what you're talking about here, too, is understanding the beginning of everything. Yeah. Understanding that God in his majesty is a triune God, mm-hmm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they were together in the beginning his word, he spoke and things were created yep. and came to life. And that really is our beginning, like as far as humanity, right? When he spoke us into existence and he created Adam and Eve. And it's significant to think how all three of the, I mean, there were many important aspects of history, right? That take place, but the beginning and having the three together as a triune God at the very beginning and then to see Jesus' birth and him representing the Trinity here walking Really powerful. So in in John 17, 
uh, 4 and 5, it says, I, this is Jesus talking, I have glorified you on the earth. Mm. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. See? So this it, is it, Jesus it praying. It ties like th- three significant parts. And we're now here we are in end times waiting for the second coming of our Lord. Right. right. And so there's, it's all tied in together. It's yeah. really cool. So it's pretty cool. And the Jews were anticipating the Messiah. And here he is. But, you know, how do how do how how are most kings depicted? Most kings have a throne. They might have like a robe, the mm-hmm. fanciest mm-hmm. of clothes, gold jewelry, a yep. crown, a palace or kingdom entourage an entourage you know people that protect them and so forth and so it was kind of baffling the way the messiah came into the world the king of kings the king of kings as a baby but right a baby that didn't have all the things all the glamour and the glory and the right he came in and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in the manger, which we'll get to. So and P- I think within all of us, God put a yearning to desire him. Even those who don't believe desire him. How do I know? Because human beings desire superhero movies. And because of that, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can, can talk, I can, I can see what are the mm-hmm. most, uh, you know, popular, uh, popular movies. movies and yeah. so forth. Well, it's because we all understand that there's challenge in the world. We all understand. We're all yearning for a savior. E- even if so, everybody yeah. doesn't call it sin, everybody seems to understand there's challenge, okay? And that there's bad things. That, there's bad yeah. things. And we are gravitated towards somebody that has superpowers. And you know what? Jesus is more powerful than all the Avengers put together. Right. So it's, it's pretty amazing. But how did he come into the world in the most humble way a king could possibly enter the world? As a baby. Right. In the womb. Yeah. Very, if you know anything about newborn babies, which if you're listening to Courageous Parenting Podcast, you are parents, you understand where I'm going with this, but a newborn baby is is fragile and they are at, they are um, in need of care and nurturing. Um, unlike other animals, like there are religions out there that try to liken humans to animals and that's not accurate. And God made us, need one another. Mm -hmm. We need human connection in a way that no other creature actually really does. And we don't wean our babies at six weeks and let them take off into the wild. They can't survive in that way. And God came to earth as one of those really weak, one of the weakest creatures Mm -hmm. actually, yet the, he's the most powerful God in the universe, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's baffling to a lot of people. Now God has a plan. And he always has a plan. And he had a plan for how he's going to do this. And no human being could think of this plan. It would be absurd for us to come up with it. And it was the perfect plan, as we know. But this right here, what we're going to talk about in the beginning of Luke, I'm going to start in uh, chapter 1, verse 5, and we're going to go through. So a lot of scripture here. I'll stop and hit on certain parts of it. But I think it's important at Christmas time that we understand what scripture says. Mm-hmm. And we'll go into the beginning of chapter 2, which is the birth of Jesus. And so, but a lot of times when you hear a sermon on uh, at Christmas time or on the birth of Jesus, they they often miss this first part. And I think this first part is incredibly important. And, and as God prepares the way for the ministry of Jesus and, and for what happens on the cross, for the gospel message, it's just incredible. So what we're going to talk about here is a barren old couple, Zacharias and Elizabeth. I might call him Zach sometimes just because I don't know. I like calling Zacharias Zach, but it's really Zacharias, Zacharias and Elizabeth and a betrothed young couple named Joseph and Mary. Mm-hmm. And so a couple a couple of couples here. Um, right. So we're going to dive in. So right, right here we have in chapter 5, uh, 1, 5, verse 5, uh, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Wow. So is it possible to be blameless? Is it possible to be walking in all the ordinances and commandments Mm -hmm. of God? It is. Sometimes we get fooled these days Mm -hmm. into believing that we can't 
live a righteous life. Right. This is really encouraging, especially as you move into verse 7, because there are a lot of doctrines out there that are prosperity, health and wealth gospels that that basically will even go as far as to say that, oh, if you can't have kids, there must be some kind of sin in your life or you're, mm-hmm. you're experiencing pain or suffering or illness. What What is it? Right. And yeah, sometimes there is, but not always. So as you go into seven, this was really amazing because. Remember, they were blameless in verse six. Mm -hmm. And then we go into seven and it says, but they had no child. So they wanted children. Children, um, unfortunately, today are often looked at as a burden. But back then, nobody looked at children as a burden. They were an absolute blessing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we are also to look at children as an absolute blessing, not to let any selfish reasons come into play for not having children. Mm -hmm. Um, There might be some other reasons, but not selfish ones, right? Mm -hmm. So we always have to audit that. But right here, let's go into it. So, uh, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. Not young folks. They're they're very polite and the Bible is very polite. Well advanced in years. It's kind of like when I go to the doctor (laughs) only and they say, oh, you're advanced maternal age and they're station but yes. they were a lot older than you <laughs> geriatric maternal <laughs> they were a lot older than you that's true they okay. were so uh so it was that while he was serving as priest before god in the order of his division this is a big deal so we we know about uh zacharias he's a mm-hmm. priest um they've never been able to have kids elizabeth is a faithful wife and they're walking all god's commands um According to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense. This is a really big deal, folks. Um, when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. So when when the incense was burned, um, it was just a really big deal. And a priest uh, was, I believe, only able to do that one time a year. So this was uh, his turn to do it. And of course, God picks timing, right? Yes. Sometimes we think timing... Uh, when crazy things happen Mm -hmm. is bad, but God knows the perfect timing and it often looks differently than how we want things to play out. So um, now they're all praying for him. So they're all outside waiting for him to hear what Zacharias hears from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. I like the specifics here on the right side. Okay, mm-hmm. it's important to God. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now, oftentimes when uh, in the Bible, when angels first appear, people get fearful. Mm-hmm. And so, and then the angels talk to him and say, don't be fearful. That's a common uh, thread that you'll see. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Did you guys catch that? The Holy Spirit was entered into John while he's in his mother's womb. Pretty incredible. That is incredible. And you'll see why God did that in a little bit okay so very very interesting and he will turn many of the children of israel to the lord their god he will also go before him in the spirit and the power of elijah and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the lord wow so important right to be living out our christian faith because when we are as fathers what happens our hearts will be turned towards our children Our children, which is the purpose of courageous Mm -hmm. parenting, right? So very, very cool. So we all know that John, when he's older, prepares the way for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus isn't born yet. So who was born first? John. John, yeah. John, because he's a little older. At this point, Mary's not even pregnant yet. Right, right. So this is pretty cool. Um, And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. Now, I'm putting a little into that because I think he kind of said that in a skeptical way, as we'll read forward. Mm -hmm. He was doubting. So however he said that, he said it with doubt. Like, how can that possibly be? Are you kidding me? We're so old. We haven't had a kid to this date. I'm adding in here a little bit. doesn't say that. But what it says, I'll say it again. And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, 
who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Mm -hmm. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. What might God be asking us to do that we doubt? Mm. What a loving God to have consequences for us. Mm -hmm. Are there consequences when children disobey their parents? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's our parent? God the Father. God the Father. So are there consequences when we disobey God or we don't trust what his word is to us? Well, he says that he even disciplines the son whom he loves in scripture. So yeah, if he loves us, and he, we know he does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and the people waited for Zacharias. Okay, the people are outside praying. Remember them? They're outside praying. He's in there. It's taking a little longer as we're going to read here. Mm -hmm. Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I can just envision Zacharias. He's like, I can't speak. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the, what, what are they going to think? How am I going to communicate with them? They're so wanting it, to know what the Lord like told me. It's like you're about me. to go up on stage to give a speech, and all of a sudden, you can't talk. There's you all these people voice. outside praying for you. You're supposed to be burning, and then come out and tell them what the Lord said, and you can't even speak. He's so, like lingering. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do? He's thinking, okay. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled. They lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. I kind of envision him like doing, what's that game when you're trying to- Charades. Charades. You're trying to act something out without seeing it. I envision him like waving his hands and- <laughs> Yes. Like an angel talked to him, like envisioning an angel. I don't know. I mean, when I will always tell you where it's extra biblical. I'm imagining from this text what well, he yeah. might be doing. I mean, envision but, that. I mean, we all yeah. know he came out of the temple eventually, and yeah. he's speechless here, and he's supposed yeah. to tell them what the Lord had told him. And so how would he do that if he's speechless? Yeah. So yeah. exactly. So it was as soon as the days of his service was com were completed. So he had to go back in and, and continue many days for his service to be completed without being able to speak. So I'm sure that was bad timing to lose your voice when he, it's his turn as a priest to be in the temple doing all these special things. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, and he departed to his own house. Now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself five months saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. So today is the opposite of back then. Back then, if you couldn't have kids, other women actually looked very, very poorly on the woman mm -hmm. that couldn't have kids. Mm -hmm. Now, I am thankful, by the way, if someone can't have kids, that we don't do that today. But what I love is when people do look at kids as being a blessing. Mm -hmm. And so she, um, this is a big deal for her. Uh, she would no longer be looked at poorly in that mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee. Does that sound familiar? Named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. There is no mistake in how the Bible is written. It is the authority, biblical, it's the biblical word of God. God ordained every single word to be in here just how it is. And this is really important. I could just keep moving on, but here's a prophecy fulfilled. The prophecy that Jesus, the, the Messiah, would come from the line of David. And the Bible is very careful to actually record the lineage in previous texts of W mm -hmm. all the way where who comes from David mm -hmm. and then boom right here Joseph of the house of David another prophecy fulfilled the virgin's name was Mary and having come in the angel said to her rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you blessed are you among women now I believe every woman who's pregnant should feel this kind of rejoicing Mm -hmm. And if you ever haven't, I'm sorry, because that would be mm -hmm. very, very tough. Mm -hmm. But this is an amazing thing to have a baby. Now, Mary had some unusual circumstances where mm -hmm. the king of kings was... <laughs> was it, right, the was savior, it the messiah. Yeah, and she knew God it. Of all. <laughs> she knew it. Let's read here. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. 
for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. He's the Messiah. He's the one her people, mm-hmm. Mary's people, the Jewish people were waiting for. And so when when she was told this, she knew this is the king of kings. Okay. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And I think we all know what that means, knowing a man back then. Mm-hmm. And, the, and because um, that she was betrothed to Joseph, but not married yet. Back then they would mm-hmm. betroth committed but not know each other, if you know what I mean. Yes. In case any little ears are hearing. Okay. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative. Oh, we just found out some new information. Elizabeth and Mary are relatives. Who Mm -hmm. prepares the way for Jesus? John, who's in Elizabeth's tummy right now? John. John, a little bit older than Jesus to kind of mm-hmm. prepare the way before Jesus' ministry begins. And remember, at the very beginning of this, in verse 26, it said, now this is the sixth month. So while Elizabeth was six months pregnant with John the Baptist, that's when the angel came to Mary. Yeah. So now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. I love that scripture right there. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Mm -hmm. Does anybody need to hear that right now? For with God, nothing will be impossible. It's interesting because if I was Mary and I was a young girl and I had not, you know, known a man and I was betrothed to someone and an angel was telling me that I was going to be with child, I'd be a little skeptical, a little worried, a Mm. a lot of, a lot of different things. Right. But it's like, he's telling her, Hey, Elizabeth was barren. It was impossible for her to become pregnant. And now she's pregnant. Yeah. So here's your proof that with God, all things are possible. Let's get back to what we were talking about, which is you're going to become pregnant. now. (laughs) Yeah. And then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. She's talking about herself. Mm -hmm. let it be to me according to your word. Mm -hmm. And the angel departed from her. So Mary didn't doubt. Mm -hmm. She believed what the angel said. Is that a little different than Zacharias? Zacharias doubted. And what happened to him? He became mute. There was a consequence. Mary didn't doubt. And she believed. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Now Mary arose in those days and went out into the hill country with haste so quickly to a a city of Judah. And entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now remember, back up a little bit. Who was filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb? John. John. And what happened here? Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary and the babe leaped in her womb. And then she, and, and then Elizabeth and Elizabeth got the Holy, the Spirit. Holy Spirit. So also. John, so John in the womb recognized Mary's voice and knew that is the mom of Jesus and knew Jesus was in her womb. So incredible. Can I just point out something else that just yeah. dawned on me as you were reading this? This particular passage of scripture also makes the point and recognition that both the baby and the mother are two separate entities. Yes. They are connected because the mom is carrying the baby, but John was filled with the Holy Spirit and then his and his mom was filled with the Holy Spirit. They both were filled with the Holy Spirit. They're two separate people. And John had the yeah. intelligence to leap knowing his friend was there. Yes. His friend Jesus. It's really cool. And so very interesting. Yeah. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her. From the Lord. You know what's cool is, you know, here we've got a 
a woman advanced in her years, thought she was never going to have a kid, but lots of wisdom. I mean, her husband's a priest, they're leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. And then you have young Mary, who's actually never been married, okay? She's betrothed, and she, through the Holy Spirit, has a child, and it's going to be the king of kings. And all of a sudden, if this wasn't the circumstances and uh, Mary was visiting, I'm sure she'd be like, oh, how are you? How can I help you? What questions do you have for me? Mm -hmm. But instead, she's like, whoa, how am I deserving of a visit from the mom of my king? Mm -hmm. That's a totally shift because Elizabeth got the Holy Spirit and Elizabeth Mm -hmm. now knows everything. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Yeah. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Let's pause there for just a second. I I think that's so important right there. His mercy is on those who fear him. That is a fear uh, for, that is a respect for God's authority in your life. That is respecting that he is in control and that we answer to him and that he's loving, but also a just God. And so we want to do mm-hmm. well. We want to do right by God. And we know he's always looking. And what happens when no one's looking really matters. And then, so his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Now it's a legacy impact. Mm-hmm. When someone fears God, that's likely to continue through the kids. Very cool. Yeah. And she continues in her song. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. So many people have prideful hearts and it's the imagination uh, that we have of our hearts, of the things we want, the things where we're going and without including the Holy Spirit and God directing our paths and we become prideful and we become we start doing things in our own strength. He's going to crush those people. Yeah. And even just, and he's exalted the lowly. I also think of how I'm sure that even though Elizabeth was married to a priest, Zacharias, there was an aspect of humility and even um, maybe lacking confidence and in her own self, she might have felt lowly because she was barren. Mm -hmm. So here he takes someone who's barren, who has this reputation in the community, and he exalts her who's lowly, right, to carry John the Baptist, who goes forward, right, as a forerunner for his, for God. But then he also exalts Mary, this young girl, who is she, right? She's probably like, who am I? Um, It's just really a beautiful passage. And she continues, he has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her house. It's so cool how long they spent together. I think God also did this for encouragement. Mm. Two pregnant ladies encouraging each other. Mm-hmm. I, how many times do we need if you're if it, whether you're the husband or the wife listening uh, if you're ever alone uh, you want to fix that okay um, now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered and she brought forth a son when her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her they rejoiced with her so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child and they would have called him by the name of his father Zacharias this is a very important tradition in their culture his mother answered and said no he shall be called John look at how clear she is no semicolon He shall be called John. (laughs) But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father. Why did they make signs to his father? He could not, he could not talk, but I'm kind of wondering if he can hear very well either because they're making signs to him, but he was muted. So Mm -hmm. what he would have, would have him called. And uh, he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. So it's kind of cool. You know, he backed up his wife right there, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, I think he learned something from being mute and uh, doubting. He didn't doubt anymore. So they all marveled 
Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke praising God. So right there is the proof. The chills. <laughs> right there is the yeah. proof that he didn't doubt anymore. Mm-hmm. And God blessed him mm-hmm. for that faith. Okay? Then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. So what an incredible thing that spread uh and uh spread faith really is what it did. Mm-hmm. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with them. Now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Now prophecy is three things, foretelling the future, uh, it's teaching the word of God, and it's also praising God. And this particular prophecy includes all three. So if you ever wonder what prophecy is, uh, you can look in Luke chapter 1, verse 67 as we go into this, okay? Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us. Who's the horn of salvation? Jesus. In the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. This is the point of Jesus' birth, right? Mm -hmm. Let's continue reading. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. We are to serve God without fear Mm -hmm. because Jesus put an end to death. Death no longer has this grip on us because we go with our father. It's incredible. Might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people. So this is John's um, role here. By the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Wow, isn't that all of our jobs today? Now, John was doing this, preparing the way for Jesus. Now, our job is also to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Because mm-hmm. Jesus that is the great commission. the salt of the earth, the light of yeah. the light of the world. Yeah. And John was the first one to do this. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts mm-hmm. till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Okay, now we're going to go in, and this is a lot of times where people will start teaching, and we're going to go just a little bit into two and look at the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. So everybody had to go back to their city of origin to be registered. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife. They're not married yet, but they're betrothed, okay, who was with child. Now, would this be very inconvenient for a pregnant lady? Would this be very inconvenient to everybody? Very inconvenient. Does God do things sometimes that are very, very inconvenient? so that his way is done, and we don't understand Mm -hmm. it at the time. Mm -hmm. He actually wanted them, the prophecy says, they need to be in a certain place to give birth. So this this is making that happen, okay? So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So the most... Humble beginnings Mm -hmm. for the king that made everything right between us and God. Visiting their hometown, but actually homeless Yeah, in a sense because they don't have a place to stay. And it's so full because of the senses Yeah, that they're with, I mean, really filthy animals, filthy conditions. 
the lowliest, right? It goes back to that prophecy of how God will exalt the lowly. Yeah, it's amazing. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Now you have to imagine, there is not like today where there's it's kind of light out because of city lights or we have mm-hmm. lights we turn on, things like that. These guys are out in the field. There's no lights. All that's shining is the stars. Okay, so it is dark, it is probably cold, and all of a sudden, the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, whenever the glory of the Lord shines, people are afraid at first. Okay, This this is pretty incredible. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. Wait. Which people was it for? All All people. people. Okay. So if anyone ever tells you that God is only for some people, I see all people right here in many Mm -hmm. other places. Okay. Which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Mm -hmm. So this is a heavenly host. Do you know what a heavenly host is? Do you know, do you know what a multitude is? It is massive. The entire sky lit up with a multitude of angels. You're talking not a few angels that might be in a little picture book. I'm talking the whole sky lights up. Better than the biggest fireworks show you've ever seen, probably. I mean, this is just incredible. And they are so excited, these angels. Okay, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now to go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste. So very quickly, as fast as they could, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Could you imagine being Mary? She is, I mean, this is an extraordinary thing. Mm -hmm. She's probably, whoa. Whoa. This is incredible. What a responsibility. Mm -hmm. What an honor. Mm -hmm. She's probably just marveling at God. So many things that God did, orchestrated, delivered. The angel spoke to her. It happened. Everything the angel said happened. Mm -hmm. Her faith is strong. Very cool. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Now, I want to just finish off by talking about Christmas a little bit, because Christmas, this is the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. It is about Jesus's birth. But sometimes, especially for kids, it can be about other things. It can be about presents. Now, giving presents is an awesome thing. It's, the, it's generosity. It's thinking of each other. It's loving one another, which the Bible tells us to do. But if the presents become the focus, then we're missing the whole point. It's interesting. When you were um, giving this message in church, I wrote down a phrase that just um, came to my mind when you were talking about presents to the children. And it was this simple phrase, which is, what are you focused more on? presence or the presence of God. Mm. Because really the presence of God is the best gift. Yeah. And God gave us that gift when he sent his only begotten son to earth. God, the father is the best gift giver of all. And when we give gifts, giving gifts isn't bad. Mm -mm. In fact, we can give gifts in his name. Yeah. The gifts of God, that all comes from God anyways. 
It does. But we have to, as parents, we have to purpose and try to remind our children who gives the gifts anyway. Mm -hmm. And what is the most precious gift? That's why pausing and taking a moment and stopping and listening to the the story of, or the reaccount, I don't like the, the word story, but the reaccount of Jesus coming to earth as a baby is so important for us to take the time to behold him, Mm -hmm. to remember, to really think about. And sometimes the messages can get muddled up. We think we've heard this message a hundred times, right? Especially if you've grown up in the church, you may think, oh, I know that I know Jesus was born Mm -hmm. of a Virgin Mary. Some people may even go, oh, I played the Virgin Mary in the nativity or, Mm -hmm. you know, right? But the reality is, is what you just, walked us through in Luke chapter one, there were so many significant things that I actually had not heard until you preached on this. Mm. For example, John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb, um, Elizabeth then being filled with the Holy Spirit also, that's powerful because Jesus leaves the Holy Spirit during Matthew 28 in the Great Commission with all of us before he ascends on high to Mm -hmm. sit on the right hand of God the Father, right? And it's a powerful message for us because it's a pro-life message too. It is. Right? And there's just so many angles and aspects and thoughts that just flood into my mind when we are reading through this precious story. Yeah. Right? Talking about that there is actually an element of where if we fear God, we will not fear the flesh. We will yeah. not fear man. We will not fear circumstances. We will not fear what a king could do to us or an enemy yeah. could do to us or any of these things, right? If we focus on him, our perspective has changed, which yeah. is what we're talking about with kids. If their so focus is on the presence. Here's the challenge to think about then. Mm-hmm. So for the kids, do you find the presence that have your name on them under the tree? Now, this isn't necessarily bad. Do you shake them to try and see what's in them? Do you count mm-hmm. how many presents you have? That's not necessarily bad unless that is dominating what you're your thinking about process. and your thought process. Yeah. And you're so enamored and you're so curious mm-hmm. about what you've been given that you forget the meaning of Christmas. It overrides. Anything that takes our attention away from God mm-hmm. beca- is is an idol, actually. And God says, do not have any idols. And so we do not want to make presence and material things an idol. We want to really internalize what the significance is for you personally, that a king, that God's son, who was with him in the beginning, came in the flesh so we could have an understanding. And so that flesh could be destroyed as a sacrifice So that we could be right with God, forgiving us for our sins. Mm -hmm. So that we can have a direct relationship with God and be right with Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. How incredible is that? And if we miss the power of the gospel, what Jesus did on the cross, then we won't internalize well enough the power of Jesus' birth. And then we might be on the adult side now, the schedule, the busyness. Mm -hmm. Did we do the Christmas lights just right? Did we go do this event just right? Did we have this party? Mm-hmm. Are we focused on the count, the things in the calendar over Jesus? Yeah. You know, it's interesting as you were talking about the presence under the tree and kids running to go and shake them or whatever. I, I couldn't help but think about, I'm reading um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's God in the Manger Advent book. And in there, it talks about what is Advent? What is the purpose of that? It's the awaiting of our King and kids actually it's a good object lesson actually for them to be challenged to have to wait patiently to open their gift yeah right because when if you've ever been pregnant before isn't there an element of just you struggle with impatience and oh the husbands are even like oh is that a contraction are we gonna have the baby like today (laughs) right even two weeks beforehand right and how many times do we do that in life where we're just not exercising the patience that God wants for us. And and I, I think it's so special that God uses this, a birth, a pregnancy and a birth to bring forth life and the imagery that's there in waiting the king of kings coming and that we can relate to that. 
it yeah. brings such a relatability to life. And this, the people often mention the circle of life or whatever, right? And I mean, we all have been birthed, yeah, right? And we all, that it's this, it's a process that we all experience is the waiting and excitement of a new baby coming. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that we've really enjoyed this year is the giving manger, um, which you can find out more about that at givingmanger.com. But it comes with this little ceramic baby Jesus and a little manger and some straw. And when you do a kind gift or a kind act of generosity for someone, you can add a straw and then the baby has something to lie on. And it's just a good reminder for teaching your kids the importance of that. There are, there are, my point is there are things that you can do to help keep the focus on Jesus during this season. Um, so that your home isn't taken over by idols, right? Yeah. And children just, uh, bless you. God loves you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he made you on purpose mm -hmm. for important reasons. Uh, to glorify him in this world. And mm -hmm. so we wish all of you a very, a very Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. We wanted to quickly tell you about our six-week online parenting mentor program. Isaac and I created a powerful biblical curriculum. Here's how it works. Each week, Isaac and I release a video with a downloadable parenting packet to make it easy for you and your spouse to incorporate those teachings directly into your parenting. It's an incredible program where we cover everything from obedience, training, to overcoming mistakes most Christians are making. But more than that, it's an incredible community. You'll have access to our private online group, live webcasts, and the Courageous Parenting text message line where Angie and I can send you weekly encouragements straight to your phone. If you're interested in joining our next online parenting mentorship program, secure your spot now at CourageousParenting.com. That's CourageousParenting.com.